got no stage fright. <laughs> Excuse me. Where's my mark? Right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. okay. I'm on the camera? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Edward X. Young, and uh, it's good to be back. I think the last time I was here might have been back in the summer, just that every time there has been a meeting, it's been inconvenient about working on a movie or, or something. And, uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm sorry we're not in Brooklyn, but save me on tolls. But uh, I, uh, I really need to be here because it's been it's been actually kind of rough. Usually I try to keep my spirits up, but for just for some reason I'm at that wrong age. I mean, I'm in my 60s, and uh, I've been to five funerals of friends or family members since since uh, Thanksgiving, and the worst was uh, the day after Christmas. Uh, the man named Jeremy, Jeremy Woodworth, who I considered my best friend, who I've known for quite a few years, uh, like, like a brother to me, uh, he died. And uh, I'm sure all of you can appreciate this. It really bothers me because uh, Jeremy, in the summer of 2022, I mean, he agreed with me on many things. And uh, his boss of the company he worked for, he was an actor, but he worked for a forklift company during the week. But his boss said, uh, no vax, no work assignments. He was 50 years old. I told him, don't do it, man. Don't do it. I said, uh, you know, and he had already had COVID, and he had the antibodies. He had no proof of that. The boss said, no vax card, no work assignments. And I said, look, going on unemployment, I said, sue. I said, I can put you in touch with people in the press. You could, like, become like a media person railing against this. But sadly, his wife said, look, we need your overtime. They had a mortgage to pay, and he went and he got the shot. He figured out. He told me, because I'm sorry. I went and got the shot. I'm not going to get any boosters. I got the card in the summer of 2022, in August. And then last year, or two years, a year and a half ago, two months later, Halloween of 2022, that weekend, he has his first stroke. Mm -hmm. And now he can't work. He's out of work because he has a stroke. He's recovering and, and going through rehab. And, and he was very happy. He gave up drinking all alcohol. He used to smoke a cigar on an He started eating right. He lost 60 pounds. But uh, on Columbus Day of this year, he had a second stroke, and, and yet he was optimistic he was going to keep fighting back, and he had a fatal stroke the day after Christmas. And I opened, I want to have a good year, but I opened, Jay was with me January 2nd, we're at his funeral in Baltimore. But we all know about the vaccines, but it just, it just depresses me that I, I couldn't convince him more not to get it, to just take the risks and don't take it. You'll survive financially. I'm glad I didn't take it and never will. And I'm the only member of my family that hasn't gotten vaxxed, and yet five of them, my sister, two of my nieces, my late father, they all got COVID after they got the shots. And I've been around people that have it, and I've never caught it. And uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm kind of down, but I'm, good to, I'm, I'm happy to be around friends. I'm happy that somebody of you showed up tonight. It's, it's, I love you all. And... Uh, I wish we were in Pasquale's house, but this is a good place, too. I didn't want to ask Edward X. Young anything. Uh, anyone? One more time, anyone? All right, Ed, you stunned them. All right. <laughs> what was that chime? Turn the volume on. You're turning off. He's telling you to get upset. All right. Okay. Anyone else want to come out? Just raise your hand. I guess I should if I'm the new person and told me I had to. And you're an actress too. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I'm not very good at this. Yes, you are. No, I am really not. I'm new. I'm new. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jay. Uh, okay, I've talked for three minutes, he had told me. Born and raised in Jersey, New York, uh, now living in Pennsylvania. I uh, had a strange upbringing. My parents were artists and musicians and more the beatnik crowd than the hippie generation. So we were kind of strange. Uh, yeah, I was never told, you can't do something. I was told, go try it. Um, I raised a lot of children most of which weren't on my own, taking care of special needs and handicapped people all my life because they were in my family. Uh, 
been a sensitive all my life. Uh, had a bad back since a car crash when I was six. No, four. Uh, multiple back surgeries, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I don't know how to label myself. I prefer not to. Some people call me an artist. Some people call me a lot of worse things. But I guess I'm a lot of different things. I just don't like to limit myself with labels. Ta-da. That's it. Uh, as that, an overview, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I just want to ask Jay anything, anyone. Anyone. Jay, how do you know, how do you came in contact with chiropractic? Um, well, having a bad back most of my life, uh, I've been on and off trying to find a chiropractor, but mostly through Ed now, he's gotten me into coming here and thought maybe it would help my health. And what else? Want to ask Jay anything? Anyone? Uh, so I'm concerned about your, I'm interested in your psychic abilities, which you didn't talk about. We can talk about that later. Yeah, what are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Good for you. Anyone else? He's a bully. Yes, he can be. You said, you said you work with special needs people and handicapped Is that why you're with it? <laughs> no, but it does give me a lot more patience. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you so much. Yes. For those in Zoom, man, I lost my voice today, so I'm sorry. That's okay. frustrating. It be what it be. <clears throat> I'll say something, it's going to be really quick. I'm Dr. Corey and Jared about the Jersey City. J. Robinson Berger, a chiropractor, he was Pasquale's professor at Eastern Institute of Chiropractic, and he said, if science cannot explain chiropractic, then too bad for science. <laughs> um, and that's really self-centered. Mm -hmm. We're so far beyond the mundane stuff and like he said in that video, we can't be taken apart. And I think more and more people are realizing that through chiropractic. That's all I have to say. Anyone ask me anything? Anyone? All right, let's clap for people. All right, so that's it. We'd like to come up. Jack, we got him. We got him. Anyone else? City about six years ago. Uh, my background is from Colombia, but I lived many, many years in Costa Rica. And from Costa Rica, as I was practicing, I moved to Jersey City because I remarried, so came back to the U.S. for, for love. And my my trip, uh, my uh, my trials with chiropractic are reflection of my life as well because I lived in several countries. But um, my story, my chiropractic story, is, um, to me is a miracle because I always suffered from neck pain. I was very athletic in, in high school, so I had a lot of neck pain. And uh, when I moved to New York City back in the late 80s, I believe, um, you know, I asked around about how I could take care of my neck pain. So I instinctively knew that this problem wouldn't be solely just massage. I feel like massage was too like superficial. And that uh, actually was my dad who told me that uh, chiropractor was helping that. So, I started going to a chiropractor in, in, uh, around Central Park West, and my very first adjustment was a miracle adjustment. I, uh, I also had like a so, sort of spiritual experience. So it was 
beyond uh, the physical as well, the physical relief. And this chiropractor in New York City, he recommended that I go to Brooklyn to the uh, cell center uh, meetings as a patient. He said, why don't you go there? So he sent a bunch of us, his patients, to go to the cell center. And I met Pat, uh, Dr. Pat. And it was all very new to me. And you know, I still couldn't quite understand the message of chiropractic, but I knew it was very powerful. And slowly, I got more interested and uh, you know, really attracted to the profession. So within a couple months, I told my chiropractor, or maybe he was actually the one that told me, he said, why don't you become a chiropractor, Mary Show? And I was like, you know what, maybe that's not a bad idea. So I, uh, I switched careers. I was studying in City College, New York City. I was studying uh, engineering, and uh, I made the switch. Um, and you know, so eventually I moved to Georgia, and you know, the rest is history. But um, when I moved back to Jersey City, I met Brian because I was walking around with my husband in Jersey City, and I saw a design chiropractor, and I just said, let me just go in there and meet the chiropractor, and maybe he can adjust me. And it happened to be Brian, so I was really glad that you know I was able to meet with him. And once again, it's like Pat Sarasoli and the Cell Center, you know, met me again. Um, I went with Brian maybe a couple times to Brooklyn to the, the meetings, but uh, you know, it has been a while. Um, where I'm at now, I just since I came back from Costa Rica, I worked as an associate uh, director with a with a car here in uh, Newark. And uh, I'm going to branch on my own this year in, in a few weeks. So that's where I'm at now. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone ask Marichelle anything? Who, who was the chiropractor in Manhattan who recommended you? Has he ever uh, been to any of the meetings? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Franklin Gilbert, Dr. Franklin Gilbert. Did you meet late time? Yes, of course. Because she came to life, you yeah. know. Anyone else? Want to ask her anything? Okay, I'm Rebecca. I am a chiropractor. I grew up on Long Island and now I'm here in New Jersey because I would love to have kids one day and they're not going to be vaccinated, so we will not be educating them in New York. So my uh, boyfriend and I are also planning to open up a practice here soon, as I'm also practicing somewhere else. Uh, I also experienced some like negativity over the holidays, so that actually motivated me to yeah. you know, serve more people and do better and uh, bring up the spirits I think so yeah that's where I'm at like kind of in a struggle and also really excited and very fortunate to have all of you here and have that support so I needed tonight I was like I'm going to sell up because that's like how I'll continue to shift my spirit <laughs> yeah all right anyone to ask Rebecca anything anyone anyway. How did, how did you discover chiropractic? So my dad has been going to chiropractors since he's young and growing up we had a chiropractor across the street. So I would go but more so for sports injuries and not as a spiritual and it's a now it's a lifestyle. However, my dad was like you're going to be a chiropractor and you just have the ability to do this job and now my whole family gets adjusted all the time and yeah, so my dad was a big proponent. My cousin is a chiropractor that graduated from life and she was a big she's a huge role model of mine. So, yeah, my family. Anyone else? Zoom world. Mm -hmm. um. Anyone? Nancy. Nancy, go ahead. Hi. Um, 
Is the sound working there? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm Nancy, um, uh, some of you know me as a uh, psychic medium, um, and it's interesting, um, uh, I, I want to say congratulations yeah. to everybody. This is a, um, a continuation of Self Center, but also um, moving it into Brian's actual space brings a different energy. Um, and, uh, and it's really a wonderful uh, event. Uh, my computer was giving me problems, so it took me a while to get on, and um, I'm delighted that I'm able to do this, that just be part of this inaugural meeting. Um, we're gonna see where this all goes, and it's very exciting and beautiful and uplifting for everybody. Um, um, I uh, wanted to share something personal. Um, about three and a half years ago, I um, uh, retired from my job at the university. Some of you know I've been a professor and a psychic, which has been a very interesting life. Um, and for three and a half years, I've had a lot of physical challenges to the point where I thought I wasn't going to walk again, and then I broke my ankle, and through chiropractic and also through physical therapy, through some blessed chiropractic work, uh, through Brian and through uh, my chiropractor here in Florida, Christina Jensen, I'm doing great, and this week I had a breakthrough um, with um, uh, God's timing in the way that things go is I was really guided for more educational work that's going to be required of me uh, uh, with a global children's project and I'll continue doing my psychic readings and I can tell you if it wasn't for chiropractic I would not be walking around and God bless those of you who are chiropractors and I tell God, if I'm going to incarnate again, please make me a chiropractor. Because the work you do is holy work. It is holy. And to show you how amazing God arranges things, to the, the lady who spoke about Frank Gilbert, Frank Gilbert was my first chiropractor in New York City when I was 27 years old. I met his wife. She said, go to him, talk to him. The medical doctors had told me I'd be in a wheelchair and never walk again. Uh, he took care of me for years and years in New York, brought me to Pasquale, and I became a, I, I did readings for Pasquale. So it totally changed my life. Chiropractic, if it wasn't for chiropractic, I literally wouldn't be walking around. And I have to tell you, I've been all over this world, thank God, I'm so grateful. And um, it looks like I'm going to be on the move again. It's like I'm back. And uh, I'm just thrilled and so grateful for chiropractic. Thank you all for what you do. You may not realize the impact that you have, but by getting people straight and getting people balanced, you get them right with God. And that is really the beauty of the whole thing. And that's where the healing takes place. So thank you for letting me talk. I talk too much, but professors tend to do that. Sorry. Anyone in this? Nancy, anything? Anyone? Uh, anyone? One more time. Joanne. Nancy, where do you plan on going? Who is that question from? Joanne. Say Joanne. Joanne. Oh, hi, Joanne. Hi, Nancy. I can, I can only see like Brian and, and I, I can. Rachel, yeah, yeah, we okay. can turn the computer. So, I, I just signed on with the Global Children's Academy yeah. to do a global early childhood training program online for the world. And um, I think it's going to take me a lot of places. So I'm ready. Cool. Anyone else? Anyone? All right, Nancy, thank you. Anyone? Awesome. Oh. Stephen. Stephen. Oh. 
ones too, but. Hello. Oh, I beat you up here, Steve, sorry. Hi, Steve. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, beat you up. I'll beat you up. Fernando Mendez, chiropractor, Brooklyn. Jack is very excited to see me up here. You can come over here with me. All right. Uh, so, yeah, thanks to Brian Server for hosting this event. And Jack, uh, it's, a, it's a big change for us. It's obviously a new year. Uh, I made some changes in my life, and it's nice. I, I'm slowing down, which is uh, can be very frightening. It's something I've tried to do many times for many years. And when I, I know I've had opportunities and I've looked for other things to do and projects to start. And at this point, there's not too many more projects to do other than, I already have a plate full, you know, of just being a chiropractor, taking care of my family. Uh, one, one thing I did start was uh, this Bible reading. And uh, I started at the end of the year. We st I started in Revelations, which is not the place to start, but we just had to start somewhere. And it was like a, just like a testing place to see how it was going to go. And now I'm in Genesis with the beginning of the new year. So it's kind of nice. Nice place to start. And as I'm reading through it, uh, I, I get the feeling I used to get when I was with Pasquale when I was in his house. Because uh, I, I practiced in Spain for a couple of years. And then I moved back to Brooklyn. It was a time where I wasn't practicing. And uh, I would just hang out with Pasquale. And even when I was practicing, I practiced in that office. I'd hang out with Pasquale, and kind of what we're looking at that video of being in that pause, I would like, uh, you know, you just like lose time. I was just there, like, and think about what I had to do. I didn't have more things to do. It was a lot of calm. And now with this Bible reading, I get the same thing. You don't know where it's gonna go. You get a little dizzy almost. Uh, but as I was going through it, there's one part and now I'm losing my voice like Brian for some reason. <laughs> uh, there was a part where uh, Jacob wrestles, it says a man in my Bible, it could be God, an angel. And uh, it's very strange, it's just this part that's thrown in there. And Pasquale would talk about it, but I've never read through the whole Bible like this, so I didn't know, what, you know exactly where it was. I said, oh, here, but it's just kind of thrown in there. And it's strange, but as I was reading, I was like, oh, Pasquale talked about this a little bit. And uh, I have this paraphrased Bible, which makes it kind of easier to read through the whole thing. And I said, well, that's some of the stuff Pasquale didn't kind of mention that. But then Pasquale had a Bible he liked to use, a Dewey Reads Bible. So I went and I got his Bible, and it's like a whole different thing that's going on in this Bible. <laughs> But in this passage, it says that the uh, angel touched Jacob on his uh, its hip, and then he asked the guy, what's my name? And I can't tell you the whole meaning of this story, but I know the guy goes, what's it, my name? And Chris Wally would say, the hip, if the hip bone, if you look at it, another name for it is the innominate bone, which means no name. So, so it's a very strange connection. Uh, these insights Pasquale would have. And just reading through Genesis, there were many other things that uh, that you would not know what was going on, but Pasquale had so many insights. And it's pretty exciting now to just start this and see where it goes, but having that background of what Pasquale has already kind of put into me, of years of hearing these things in my head. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm at. I, I couldn't imagine be a, I probably wouldn't be a chiropractor if it wasn't Pasquale, a self-center, because there is no logic, there is no science to it. Like every person, you know, I, I tell my wife or I tell anybody, you know, it's so it's so not a business. Like there's no routine. Like every party is so different every single time they come in. And even what they say doesn't mean necessarily what they mean. And you put them on the table and uh, Every, every, every moment kind of wild and unexpected. Uh, and that's it. And that's why we're here to get deeper into it and just to help people out. And that's, I guess, all I have to share. Okay. Ask for Daniel. Anyone? Are, are you reading the Bible linearly? Like page one yeah. to the last page going in order? Yeah, I think uh, this, there's like a, a plan, and I think there's parts you can skip over. So. Uh, but even the parts that, I, like some parts I was like, why am I skipping over this? What's in here that they're telling me not to read? And there was one part that was talking about some guy who robbed God. I was like, 
It was just like the one, they, they made me skip, like, it would just go read here, then skip that line and keep reading. I said, well, I'm going to obviously read that line. Hey, this guy robbed God. What the heck does that mean? You know, who knows? Anyone else? Anyone else? Look at Jack. <laughs> You're a very good boy. <laughs> 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 Nancy has a question. question. Go ahead. Nancy. Go ahead, okay, Nancy. Good. Um, you mentioned about you don't know what's going to happen and things being unexpected. How do you feel about things that are coming that are unexpected? Oh, so it's about me relaxing into all this. There's this thing, me and Brian are in this text thread with this guy, Bob, and there's some, like, this goofy character who just... It's very strange, but he's very harmless. But he's just strange and unexpected. And he's giving these life lessons to people just to be accepting of people, even if they're strange. And just be chill, he's the guy says, you know, and just relax. Like, just because things are not organized or what you expect, you know, don't just take, you know, take it easy and just kind of go with the flow. And that's uh, definitely... Uh, what I have to do with these things. I wish there was just a set way, you know, that things could just happen and be organized and eight, one plus one equal two, but it doesn't happen, so. Anyone else?
Steve, where are you Zooming from? I'm in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I need a rescue. Can you send a, like a squad to get me out of the house? Right now, uh, we need a, a safe word. I'm in Arizona. Thank you. Anyone else? starting and this is just another progression of it for me I was looking forward to coming tonight and uh, I did miss the two bridges going over there no I didn't miss the bridges going to Brooklyn but it was it our last meeting in self center in Brooklyn was kind of like uh, everybody got up and shared a little bit about what that place meant to them and I, I felt like it was really touching um, <coughs> And there's a lot of chiropractic history in that building and way before I ever went there. And Pasquale practiced there and Alita practiced there and uh, Ade and the kids grew up there. Like, there's, there's so much to that building that had a lot of history and vibration to it. And I'm pretty sensitive to vibration and, and that type of energy. And I feel very good about being here. It's different and parking and moving around, but I think back of all the years I've been a chiropractor myself and what a gift it's been to me. I haven't even, I don't think I'm as grateful as I really should be that I was chosen to be able to do this. And like a lot of the people, some of the people I've been working on, I don't even speak Spanish and they speak Spanish and don't speak English. And the last one I, I went with that, he just knew 
that I was there to see the God in him and help him. He helped me more than I think I helped him. But he helped me look at these little component parts that we forget about. And then last weekend, I also had one of my practice members pass on, and he was like four generations of people that I've been taking care of. And I went to the wake, and the priest that was there was talking, and he said, I was in Dr. Mark's office getting adjusted when I found out about Ted, meaning him in the hospital. And he goes, you know, Dr. Mark's the family chiropractor. And I have. I've taken care of it. It really hit me there. I've had the great-grandfather, the grandfather, the fathers, and the kids. And that lineage and that history that went through there, I was just like, wow, it's pretty wild. And I don't give myself enough credit, I guess, for it. So I really need to, like, open this year. There's a lot of changes coming up for me this year, I feel. And with this meeting is a, a new start in that change. But I feel like... Um, when we touch people and we feel the God in them and we know where to adjust them, it's a gift to not have to think. I just wish I could stop the thinking when I'm not working, doing chiropractic, because it seems like I could tune that out at that time, but a lot of times I'm in my head. So this year for me, I want to get more physical, emotional, and spirit body to make the mind just slow down so I can really appreciate the beauty of our life here. and the beauty of what we do as, as chiropractors. Like Nancy said, we have a real gift to share with the, with the world. And uh, chiropractic is powerful. I mean, my life wouldn't be as good as it is now. And I don't think everybody has their own personalized story, but uh, it's been a really incredible ride. I'm looking forward to 2024. And the nice changes usually that would freak me out i'm looking for the jumps to make in this year because i think this was a big one that and i'd like to thank brian and sarah for opening their office space up because it feels like the nets natural progression at self center should go i mean it feels like that for me anyway and uh, that's pretty much all i have to say you want to ask mark anything i haven't seen you in a while you're looking good Exercise, diet regimen, you're looking, you're looking really good. Thank you. <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> what, what, Thank you. Yes. Okay. That's all I can say. Anyone Thank else? You. <laughs> Anyone? much for coming in person and on Zoom. This is, uh, this is a big day. In, in, this is a big day <laughs> um, for Self Center. Pasquale had the foresight to start training Brian while he was still alive. And, uh, and when Pasquale passed, there was a transition time where nobody was coming. And Brian would be here alone, bring me a theme, be in the meeting room alone. And uh, it's so amazing to me that he didn't give up. Like, keep going every month or every <laughs> Maybe get him a bottle or something. <laughs> um, so that's just to say to his um, perseverance. And for a long time, Phil Chimay was the only person coming, acknowledging Phil Chimay. And, uh, but amazing that, you know, you guys weren't like, there's no point. Why don't we just go to dinner? <laughs> because eventually, it, the family did start to come back together and continues to grow. I do see that you, you, you know, I still feel like a newbie, but that the crew, you guys did build a strong foundation together. And um, I see these meetings for, as multi, has multi-purposes, but one of the biggest ones for me is a real adjustment that happens that's stronger than a one-on-one -on -one adjustment because we come together with a common purpose. 
And I know many times we've been coming to the meetings and it's like crazy getting there and it's like, oh my God, the energy's crazy. And then when we leave, it's like, how did we get home? That was so smooth. And I know something inside of me changed. Um, Jack, we're doing this, we're talking now, so I'm talking, so. Uh, what else did I want to say? I know it's a little harder for you guys from Long Island to come, so thank you. And Fernando from Brooklyn, thank you. Um, I also was looking at, you know, Martin Luther King is on Monday. I was looking at his speech, the, his letter he wrote in the Birmingham prison. And one of the things he was saying is that the biggest enemy he sees to black Americans is not the KKK, but it's the moderate white person because they're comfortable with how things are. And that's where he felt the real shift needed to happen in consciousness for not just service, but divine justice. So how this relates to chiropractic is I feel that similar, on a similar level, chiropractic is here to shift the consciousness. And many people are, are, are comfortable and part of Part of the work is them becoming uncomfortable, like Jack right now. <laughs> so, and, and we hold the space for that. And some can stay with it and some can't. And that's not really, each person has their own journey. But we do our best. And I do believe coming together strengthens our light, our mission, and uh, our, our power here on Earth. <laughs> Thank you. I want to ask or anything. chiropractor in Brooksburg, Pennsylvania. It's really great to be here. There's definitely an amazing energy with everybody showing up. And it was kind of sad, you know, thinking about the last meeting might be where it is or was our last meeting in uh, Brooklyn. But this is very hot here tonight. There's an amazing energy here. Brian, thanks for keeping things going and for having us here in Sura. Thank you. Um, it's been an interesting beginning of the year. It seems like a lot of people are coming out of the woodwork and coming back, which is quite exciting. And you know, it's wild. I've, in my office, I've seen a bunch of people that haven't been in in years, and they're just showing up. So that's very, very cool. And it like looks like it's really going to be quite an exciting year. A lot of new energy. And you know, I've focused more recently on really trying to elevate like what I do and refine it. And you know, it's funny how. You get into this pattern where things are like moving up and then suddenly like things get quieter so it's funny how you just have that up and down up and down and regardless of what you do it kind of goes up and down but it's exciting when everything connects and the people come and it's just magic you know it's interesting this morning I didn't have a very busy morning but the one guy who came in he actually ended up giving me quite a lot of money and it was just kind of cool because he even saw that you know I wasn't as busy as I normally would be on a Saturday so he dropped money and it ended up being about what I normally have on a Saturday so I thought that was quite cool. That's about it. Anyone want to ask Alex anything? Anyone? Anyone? You got any uh like New Year's goals for your office over there in Pennsylvania? My goal has been, and I think it'll continue to be, just to be focused on what I do, try to refine how I approach what I do, and elevate it. That Those are like my two little buzzwords that I like. Anyone and else? just continue with that dedication. What part of PA are you in? A town called Bloomsburg. How far is that from Bethlehem? From Bethlehem, about an hour and a half. Oh, if, wow. if you hit Delaware Water Gap on 80, it's basically about 70, 75 miles west. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone? I don't know. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just about, that's all you have. My, my father came from a town called Frackville. Is that close to Bloomsburg? Kind of. It's yeah, about 40 minutes away yeah. down in coal country. I know I've driven yeah. through and seen the signs. All my family's dead out there now. They oh. all got old and died. But I used to see the signs. <laughs> have, you, have you been out to Centralia there? Oh, I, I, yes. I have seen it from a distance. I've seen it. I, I haven't walked the streets in Centralia, but yeah, it's rather famous. Yeah. Anyone else? It's still on fire, right? It sure is. They said <laughs> yeah. for another thousand years. Yeah. Hello, Phil Chimay, King's Park, chiropractor. Um, Jesus said that you can't put new wine in old wineskins. And this is what I see here, a new wineskin. And we have to put new wine in this new wine skin. And I thank you for providing this skin so we can all get thicker skins and not be so sensitive. Everybody out there is so sensitive. You're going to watch what you say. Use the right pronouns. Everybody gets upset. Um, and part of that new wine is, most of you know, I'm writing, rewriting the Bible uh, mm -hmm. with a different understanding, a new understanding. And in it, I'm going off in a different tangent. I was starting on this and then something struck me and I was like wow it's been there all these years it's amazing it's like you have a diamond in the back of your yard and you've been digging and you strike it and you became rich but it's been there all along and it's been there all along and now I just saw it so I'm going off on this new chip tangent a totally different tangent that makes so much sense to me I can't believe I haven't seen it in all these years because the Bible, to me, made no sense. If you read it from, quote unquote, a historical event, for me, no sense. For me. Other people find a lot of sense in it. But because of this new tangent that, I'm just give a little snippet. It is literally, people, when you look at that Bible, you're looking at a mirror in word form. You're reading about you, everything about you, from your beginning to your end. And everything in there is an allegory about what's going on in you. This is my understanding. This is my takeaway. And how does this help me become a better chiropractor? As according to me, Jesus, to me, the best chiropractor ever. Because the word chiropractic literally means done by Christ, not Jesus. Christ in you, in you, in you, in you, in me, in every living thing on this planet or in the universe. So every time you give that adjustment, you're literally activating the Christ consciousness in that living thing, even the dog that you adjust. That's why dogs get better when you adjust them. They have a Christ consciousness. So when you read that book, I implore you to read it with a new understanding, not a historical one. You could read it that way if you want. And please explain a lot of things to me historically that make no sense to me. But if you read it from this allegorical perspective about you, for me, boy, it has opened me up. Let me tell you, this Lord God, the longest time Lord God and God to me was synonymous, right? Same entity. Because God said, let us make man in our image. Who the heck is he talking to, number one, if it is a he? God said, let us, not let me, let us make God in our image. And then the second chapter, the Lord God formed Adam from the ground. So what's the difference between the Lord God and God? I thought they were the same. Totally different. And I'm going to stop there because I can ramble on for five <laughs> hours. The point is, I'm excited in this new tangent. Um, every morning, I'm there now type. Because I, I was at a crossroads. I was stuck for a couple of months, about six, seven months. I write his block. I didn't know what the hell to write. And all of a sudden it dawns on me. How come there's two different names for this thing called God? And one day I'll tell you. Do you want to ask Phil anything? Anyone? How far have you gone? Ooh, so, I'm up to page 60 already. <laughs> and you believe this? Up to 60. I'm only writing 180 pages. 
And I think I'm only going to get through Genesis for 180 pages. But the point is, I'm up to Moses, and you know, the burning bush and everything else. And then he talks to the people that are making the golden calf and everything. Oh, there's a whole explanation to this. I said, oh, it's so enlightening for me. And I'm very excited about it. I've got to write this down. It's all here right now. I've got to write it down. And when he comes, he says, Moses says, whom should I say send me? Because they're not going to believe me. Tell them I am that I am. You know what I am in Latin? The word I am? Ego. What? God is an ego? I thought I had to transcend this thing called ego. I thought that was the bane of my existence, ego. I thought it makes me make all the wrong decisions, ego. It makes me judge. What? The Lord God is an ego? Hmm. I have to investigate this, and I have, and I came up with, oh, I love it. I'm so excited. This year is going to be a great year. Anyone else? Oh, by the way, I don't tell my people this. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my people this. <laughs> I get the two-headed look, you know. What the hell are you talking about? As Jesus said to the apostles when they asked them, again, all, all allegorical, how come you talk to us one way and you talk to them another? You have eyes and you have ears. You can see and hear what I say. They don't. So I have to speak in parallels as I call it, parables. And they can understand the parables. They're not going to understand the truth. So start to eat in Italian. Shut up. I just give them what they want. Hey, Doc, can you make me better? Sure. How much? $20. Lie down. <laughs> Get out. That's what I tell him. Get out, go tell your friends. But as long as the shepherd knows where he's taking the sheep, the sheep never ask. And he's not going to explain to them because the chlorophyll is better over here than over there. What do they give it then? Just let me eat better grass, right? Same thing. You adjust them, give them the better grass without telling them. Yes. tonight because Sora had asked me to come up and that's why I wanted to wait till the end to or the end of the first round. I don't know what Brian's going to do with that but I thought this was a good time to do this. Then. So she had asked me for sort of like a blessing for the new place and I saw uh, you have Ganesh over there and Sora requested a Hindu chant. She liked one that I did before so I'm, I I have this Hindu chant and I want to, I think it's apropos, I have to put it on for the, oops, the English translation, which I will give you afterwards. So, here it is. Every time you touch the phone, it goes somewhere else, <laughs> another page. I just want to see. Okay, so I just want everybody to set your intentions for this space. And, and for self-center, as it moves on, for Brian and Sora, Jack, right? For their family, for their life, for all of you and all of your endeavors of continuing to practice chiropractic from a higher perspective, for really wanting to meet heart to heart and becoming one with each other. And, and I'll do this chant for the, for the room. Om Asatoma Satkamaya Asatoma Jyoti Namaya Nityanga Nityangamaya Om Asatoma Satkamaya Asatoma Jyoti Namaya Nityanga Nityangamaya Shanti Shanti Om. And it says, lead us from ignorance to truth. From darkness, lead us to light. From death, lead us to 
to immortality. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> and in honor of Martin Luther King, I wanted to add just one more. And I will sing this song. And I will raise up to the night sky. And I will sing this song. I do believe we're back on solid ground. I do believe we're back on solid ground. And I will sing this song. Oh, you can join me. And I will raise up to the light sky. And I will sing this song. I do believe we're back on solid ground. One more time. And I will sing this song. And I will raise up to the night sky. And I will sing this song. I do believe we're back on solid ground. I do believe we're back on solid ground. Hallelujah. I want to say anything for like a minute anyway. We're going to end on that, everyone. We don't have to get up there, right? Yeah. No. I want to thank you, Brian. Thank you for being a cohort all these years. Thank you. Remember we had that big talk to all those people? Please, like the tree grows in Brooklyn. Yeah. Remember that story? Yeah. Where this tree has been felled, but a new shoot grew out of it. And I was telling people, like, but we need to water it every week. We have to come down. Gosh. And uh, it fell on deaf ears. But you and I stuck it through, and then it came back. So I want to thank everyone that's here this evening. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love and encouragement. And I know that this year is really going to be a great year for all of us because we are going to put new wine in this new skin over here, and we're going to make it overflow, baby. Anyone else? I just want to say thank you for welcoming me into this group and allowing me a chance to speak and experience everything that's going on here. Thanks. Anyone else? Thank you, Jay. Anyone on Zoom? If they raise their hand, let me know. Anyone in here? If you want, whatever you want. I'll just get up because it feels good to get up out of the chair. Anyway, I think this year has a lot of challenges. A lot of people coming in, you can feel their vibe. It's pretty freaky what's going on around the world and you can't help but like feel that in people. So I think us chiropractors are gonna be in touch with a lot of that craziness and chaos. Try to just, you know, like, leave it in that field and just look at the God and the God that you're adjusting and I don't know I, I mean I, I have to do it like that I really do I have to really like it's, it's overwhelming a lot of, a lot of how people come in and uh, what we do is very sensitive it's mm -hmm. sensitive work and when you're touching people you're gonna feel things and Brian used to always talk about what Pasquale would say be aware of it but don't be in it right mm -hmm stay separate from it mm. and sometimes I don't know how to how to do that sometimes and it, it, it does it takes a toll on you it'll mm -hmm. it'll break you down it'll beat you up and we deserve a very happy life we deserve a lot of abundance and that doesn't mean just money that means abundance and happiness and joy and peace and love mm -hmm. to share with the people because we're like cheerleaders too you know people look up to us and sometimes I'm, I'm walking in and I feel, I feel pretty beat up or knocked down and, you know, we're human. We've got a human side too. And that human side's got to remember the spiritual side because the spirit's more powerful than the human side. But you can't separate it. It's like I tell people, 
when they're healing, you're going to heal on all levels of physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. I don't know what they're going to experience, but they'll know what they're going to experience if they can get clearer and clearer every time you adjust them. If they stay long enough, if they quit, then that's, that's their own thing. But I think that um, I look forward to this year and changes, and there's going to be a lot of changes in all of us. And here at Self Center and Brian for, again, he stuck in there, and God bless him for doing that. And uh, I don't think we'd be having these chairs to sit in tonight if Brian and Phil and other people that lived up in Brooklyn, Fernando, people showed up and kept it together. And now this is a transition into a new space, a transition into a new life. I'm looking forward to a new life. I know changes for me are going to happen energetically and physically, and uh, I think it's all of us look forward to it, you know? Mm -hmm. We'll read it together when he's done. Sure. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Uh, one, two, three. Chiropractic is unleashing the Ark of the Covenant. Did you guys hear that in Zoom? I got the voice. Ed, say. <laughs> Chiropractic is unleashing the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> That's it for me. Anyone else? And the Ark stands for Acts of Ark? Random Kindness. <laughs> so you want to say thank you or hi, Brian? Yeah, okay. Uh, I oh, thought, I'm sorry. I'm so focused. Um, is that it? Anyone else? All right, thank you everybody. Thank you.